Hi, it's Lily again and welcome back to Terminology Tuesday. Today we're going to talk about leaf shapes. We're going to start off with the easiest leaf, the simple leaf. Let's take a closer look. So this is one of our native asters, Berkelia cordifolia, commonly known as Berkelia or Fleurs nemesis. And it has the most common leaf shape that we see, and that is called a simple leaf. That means it's just one single typical leaf. And one term we do need to know if we're going to talk about leaves is this little part right here that connects the leaf to the stem of the plant. And that part is called the petiole. And some plants have a petiole on their leaves and some plants lack a petiole. The leaves attach right up to the stem. So we snip off this whole leaf and you see it's just one simple leaf, which means it's just a individual leaf that attaches to the leaf stem. It's not separated into parts and we'll compare it to the compound leaves. And so here I have our red buckeye growing in a pot, Aeschylus pavia, and this right here is all one leaf. Here's the petiole which attaches the leaf to the stem of the plant and you can pick it off and this is one whole leaf even though you might get confused and think that these little things are leaves but that is a leaflet and this is an example of a compound leaf because it's not one simple ent entire leaf. It um, is separated into sections. It's compound. And in this case, this would be called a palmately compound leaf. And the easiest way for me to remember what palmately compound means is it looks like a palm. All of the leaflets attach at one center point together, and so they spread and fan out like a palm. A palm, a palmate compound leaf. This is Aeschylus pavia, the red buckeye. Okay, and here is another type of compound leaf. And so, you, again, you might think that this is a leaf right here, right? But you have to follow it all the way back to the stem where the leaf bud is. And that's actually where the leaf attaches. And so this entire thing is a leaf. And this is a type of compound leaf called a pinnate compound leaf. Because it is separated into these little leaflets, as you can see here, like the palmate one, but it's not arranged where the leaflets all meet at one center point. It's arranged along the leaf um, stem here. So this is one whole leaf. These are leaflets, and this is a pinnately compound leaf. And this is Caria illinoisensis, our native pecan. And here's another example of a pinnately compound leaf. This is our native elderberry, Sambucus canadensis. And this whole thing right here is the leaf. You can pinch it off from the main stem of the plant. It's a little wilted. I had to go around my neighborhood to collect these leaves. Um, but as you can see here, it's arranged similarly to the um, pecan leaf. So again, this is one leaf. These are the leaflets. Okay, and then we have another type of compound leaf that is also pinnately compound. This, but this type is called bipinnately compound, and this is an invasive species. This is mimosa with the big pink fluffy flowers that becomes a tree. Albizia julabrisian, I think is the species name. Um, so again, we're going to take this off here. This is one whole leaf. And you can see how these are the leaflets and then they're separated again further into even smaller leaflets. And so rather than being just pinnately compound, because it's separated one more time, it's called bipinnately compound leaf. So again, to compare the two, this is the just the pinnately compound leaf and then this is the bipinnately compound leaf because it's separated one more time into even smaller leaflets. Okay, and you thought we had reached the peak with uh, bipinnately compound leaves, but here we have another invasive. This is heavenly bamboo, Nandina domesticia, and it's got 
pinnately compound leaves, but these are tripinnately compound because again, we have to go back to the base to snip off the entire leaf. And this is one leaf right here. I'm gonna have to zoom out, look at that. One whole leaf. And so it is called tripinnately compound because it splits off into a leaflet. This is the main, this is one leaf again. And this is a leaflet coming off the leaf. And so that would be bipinnately compound with another leaflet coming off of these little leaflets. But then each little leaflet has another leaflet coming off of it. So this is called a tripinnately compound leaf. So again, it looks, you could be confused and think that this is a leaf here, but this is a leaflet of a leaflet of a leaflet. So again, Nandina is tripinnately compound. And here's one to kind of throw you off. This is another invasive. This is um, Ligustrum sinensis, the invasive Chinese privet, which is everywhere in North Florida here. But you might think, oh, that looks like a pinnately compound leaf, right? Well, this is actually the branch and these are the individual leaves. And so this is one whole leaf right here. And so this is just a simple leaf. Okay, so we're gonna review a little bit. These are all simple leaves. We had the Brickelli again. This is a little native muscadine, um, grapevine, that little invasive privet and our native magnolia. And then we have the palmately compound leaves like this one, this is the red buckeye and it's shaped like a palm, but it's compound because it has leaflets that come um, to a base and connect. And it's palmately compound because they all connect to the same place rather than connecting to the main uh, leaf. And then I threw this one in to kind of slip you guys up, which you might think that this is a palmately compound leaf because it has a similar shape, but these lobes don't come all the way down to the base to form a leaflet, so it's still considered a simple leaf. So it goes with our simple leaves here. And then we have the pinnately compound leaves, which differ from the palmately compound leaves because they, uh, the leaflets are arranged along the base uh, or the stem of the leaf rather than all coming to the same point on the leaf. And then we have the bipinnately compound leaves, like this mimosa here, because they, the leaflets, this is one whole leaflet right here, and then it separates again into more leaflets. And so because it separates twice, it's bipinnately compound. And then on top of that, we have the Nandina, which this is one whole leaf, and it's tripinnately compound because it separates once it separates again, and then it separates one more time off of this leaflet. So it's tripinnately compound. All right, well, thanks for joining me again for another Terminology Tuesday, and I will see you guys next week.